Hey guys, so in today's video, I want to talk about hatchling tortoise care, and I want to specifically address an issue called hatchling failure syndrome, which can kind of lead to the downfall of a baby tortoise. So before I begin, I just want to state that the majority of the info that you're going to find online and in books about tortoise care will recommend that you keep your tortoise in an open air enclosure like a tortoise table. And when I first introduced Hoppy in the last video, I believe, he was in an open air enclosure, which was basically just a sterilite tub with no lid to it and the light and the heat source were coming down from above. However, research, newer research actually, has shown that humidity is a key factor in preventing pyramiding. And I don't know what my dog is doing. Hi, Jess. So in order to achieve this high humidity environment, the onset of closed chamber enclosures have been created over the past 10 to 20 years. And if you go on to tortoiseforum.org, there's this guy who has been researching this new way of taking care of tortoise hatchlings on his own tortoises. He raises sulcatas and he raises leopard tortoises. And he has the smoothest sulcata tortoises I have ever seen. And it's all due to the closed chamber environment and his research is backed up by many, many other users on the forum. I know a lot of people will they'll shy away from keeping desert species in a humid environment because they think they come from the desert, but there has been research showing that although these species do live in like arid Saharan environments in Africa, they do burrow underground during the day. And in those burrows, the humidity can be a lot higher than the actual atmospheric humidity. This is what his environment looks like right now. It is a 50 gallon plastic storage tub where I cut the lid in half so that I can use the back to kind of suspend these little lamps underneath it. They are hooked up to the wire caging of the shelf and I have this plastic shower curtain to hold in the humidity. So if you look inside, all the heating elements are located inside the enclosure so that any humidity or heat that comes in here stays trapped. So right now his tub is at 91% humidity, which is really good and 82 degrees Fahrenheit. So right here, he's got a ceramic heat emitter for maintaining ambient temperature. We want to keep it above 80. He's got his little burrow that he likes to sleep in. This was originally the sod of the grass that I had in the enclosure, but they all died. So I kind of just put a pile of the roots over there and dug a little hole for him to get into. And then this is his 45 watt basking bulb. It's just a floodlight, but it's nice and warm underneath. He's got a stone here so he can warm up. His food is still here and he's got a little plate for water. And his soil is topsoil. I put in some rocks for him to climb on just to exercise, but he hasn't really used that side of the tub at all. He mostly just goes in there to sleep, comes out here to bask and comes over here to eat food. And I don't see him drinking water from the plate, but I'm also not home most of the day. But every time I come home, there's always dirt in here. So I know he's tracking through it at least. So here's Hoppy's outdoor enclosure. And I think in my, my last video, I said that I was gonna keep him outside whenever I could when the weather was warm and only bring him inside when it got really cold. But I've, after doing a lot of research, I found that Keeping hatchling tortoises under a year or even under two years old inside gives them the better chance of survival and prevents pyramiding the best. So this, he only uses it when the temperature outside is above 70 degrees and he only goes out here for a few hours at a time just to get the UVB from the sun. And then after he comes back inside, I soak him to rehydrate him and then he goes back into his high humidity closed chamber because over here, he can dry out really fast. And this is the type of enclosure that many websites, online sources, and books about tortoise care would recommend currently. But this is really, really old data. In the past 10 to 20 years, it's been shown that this leads to tortoise pyramiding. It's not really a matter of protein or a matter of you know temperature or anything. It's got a lot more to do with humidity than previously thought. And there he is right now, he's soaking up some sun. 
He's only been out here for about half an hour, so he'll get about an hour left. And let me show you what I mean when I'm talking about pyramiding. When I got him, he was about three and a half months old. And he is currently about five and a half months old right now. All right, so if you look at the top of his scutes right here at the very top, you see how there's some little ridges that divot in right here, right here, and right there. He's got a little bit on the side, but this is the early stages of pyramiding, and this is not what you want in a baby tortoise hatchling. It's not so bad on the sides right here, but it's definitely there on the top of his scutes. So this is basically the result of a tortoise hatchling that was raised dry. And by that I mean raised in an open air enclosure. And even if you provide daily soaking, constant access to water, the tortoise can still dry out. The shell right here, the keratin gets really, really dry. And so they start to pyramid. And if you think that all these little pyramids, if you see it in bigger tortoises, if you think that it's all just keratin growth, that is incorrect. It's actually the bone that gets deformed and the keratin is just the thin layer that grows on top of it. So it is a metabolic bone disease when you see a pyramided tortoise. But this is how I got him. And the reason why I'm bringing up hatchling failure syndrome is because I've had him for about two months now and he hasn't really gained any weight. He was. 45 grams when I got him and he's 48 now and he should technically have more growth but that's not really the case I'm seeing right here. The fact that he hasn't really gained much but three grams of weight since I got him is a little worrisome. Let me put him back here really quick so that I don't drop him. So hatchling failure syndrome also known as breeder failure syndrome is when tortoise breeders do not put their baby tortoises in closed chamber environments after they hatch. They basically raise them in open enclosures, just like this, and the baby gets dehydrated because their shells are only so thin, so they are more likely to become dehydrated than an adult tortoise. So basically, after chronic months of dehydration, it can lead to liver failure and kidney failure, and your tortoise may be fine for the first several months you get him. It may be even fine for the first year you get him, but one day you'll start noticing that they start to sleep more, they, they eat less, they start to move around less, they seem more lethargic, and that's kind of when you know they're at end stage renal disease. Their kidneys just aren't working anymore, and that will ultimately lead to their death. There's nothing you can do about it. There's no cure for hatchling failure syndrome other than trying to provide the best environment you can for them, the best diet, but it's really only a matter of time before they succumb to their kidney failure. So I got Hoppy, and I think I said he was about three months, three and a half months old. I've been talking to his breeder, and he yes, he was raised in an outdoor enclosure similar to this one. He was taken inside during cold days, but he spent most of his life outdoors, and I don't know if the breeder soaked him, so there's a high chance that Hoppy may have just been dehydrated for the first three months of his life until I got him and I put him in a closed chamber environment. So right now, I don't know if he's going to make it or not. He's currently still doing fine. He's still active. He's eating. He's pooping. He's just not gaining weight as much as he should be within the two month mark. So we're kind of at a waiting holding period at this point because he may be suffering from hatchling failure syndrome due to his lack of weight gain, or he may not be. He may just be a slow grower, and only time can tell at this point. There's really not much you can do if a tortoise has already acquired kidney damage or liver damage. There's no, no way to really tell until after death if you do an autopsy. So right now, I've been, I'm trying not to think about it because he is currently still doing fine. He's just not gaining weight. He's just under the 50 gram mark, which is kind of when you start worrying because many tortoises who were raised in a dry environment don't make it past 50 grams. They kind of just hang around just under 50. If they make it past 50, then that's awesome. If they make it past 100 grams, it's a even better prognosis. So basically you want your tortoise to grow and to be gaining weight. Because he hasn't been doing that since I got him, 
it's just kind of frustration, disappointment, stress, because I'm worrying every day, is he still eating? Is he eating a little more? Is he eating a little less? And I'm weighing him every few days to check for growth. And I do weigh him after he poops to make sure that there's no error in water weight. But I really don't know at this point whether he's going to make it or not. So all I can do now is to hope and give him the best environment, give him high humidity, keep him hydrated, give him the UVB that he needs, give him a good diet, and kind of just go from there. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Hopefully... You learned something new today. I know some of this info may be hard to grasp because a lot of other bigger reptile breeders out there will tell you just put them in a tortoise table or a zoo med tortoise house just like I have outside for Hoppy. But a lot of their info is it's really outdated info. I'm going to put a link to tortoiseforum.org in the description below this video. Hopefully you can share this video with other people who might be getting a tortoise or if you have a baby tortoise yourself and just kind of educate people, get the word out there, because the humidity issue is not well known among tortoise keepers. Even even people who have been breeding tortoises for their entire lives, like decades and decades, they're still following the old traditional methods of raising baby tortoises, but this newer research has been shown that it's, it's better. And it's just, the info is just not getting out there. So thank you once again for watching this video, and I will see you next time.